Hey everybody, uh, this is HDD Recovery. We will be recovering this uh, My Passport drive today. Okay, so if uh, you, like many others, have problems with your passport drive, there are a couple of options uh, you may have. So I'm assuming that you plugged it in and uh, it's not getting recognized. So if that's what's going on, um, first thing I would suggest trying to do is uh, if you have access to another uh, USB connector, try to use it and see if that's going to make any difference. So, I've prepared the USB connector here. I'm just going to plug this in. The light came on, it's starting to install the driver. What you see on the screen here are the four partitions, all of them from local drives so and the fifth one is the USB stick that I have plugged in so mm, drive is not showing up so far so let's have a look what we get when we go into disk manager and the disk management okay, the device driver software was not in successfully installed it's kind of expecting that message but I just want to wait and see if we will be able to get this drive recognized on here. The password is not coming up, so we're done with uh, trying to get access to it that way. If some of you may, might have tried it already, um, by recommendations uh, maybe you ran uh, like a software uh, data recovery tool uh, I'm running a really good one right now it's called our studio oh we got the passport actually coming up so I'm just gonna rescan this there's our passport drive but despite that it took almost a couple of minutes for it to come up ready it's not giving me any partition tables. This drive here, I can't do anything with it. I can't go in it. I can explore it. It's still not coming up in uh, my computer. So what do we do from here? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this. And I'll quickly show you a couple of steps that we will take to get this done. So first of all, uh, if you're not comfortable doing this, don't um, this is what the unit looks like in the enclosure but on the inside of that enclosure just gonna pry this up a little bit so we can get access on the inside of that enclosure you will find that there is a hard drive inside okay and that's what they usually would look like. The thing that separates uh, Western Digital My Passport products from any other two and a half inch drive, for majority I'd say, the majority of two and a half inch drives on the market, is their uh, proprietary USB 3.0 uh, interface. Okay, so as you can see here, they have this type of connection. Regular hard drive uh, would have this kind of connection. And this is a regular SATA type of interface. What we gotta have to do is uh, look at that number right there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'll post it in the description. This is a 771961 board, okay? 
What that tells me is that this board is actually compatible with a SATA counterpart, which comes in the regular two and a half inch drives that uh, Western Digital is selling. And the board will be ending with 77, sorry, the middle number here would be 771960. And uh, those two are compatible. And uh, the way to confirm that they're compatible would be by, um, without knowing what the part numbers need to be, uh, you need to have a look at the uh, bottom portion of the PCB. So I'm just going to remove all these T6 screws. And this is what the board looks like. Okay. So the parts you need to match uh, to make sure that this is a compatible board in the SATA version would be on the controller and on the spindle controller. Okay, so the first two lines here and the main line here need to match up. If you match them, chances are this is a compatible board and you can just swap a SATA board right on it. Alternative to this would be to um, solder a hardwire uh, a SATA connector and that's done through these four points here E71, E72, E75 and E73. I'm also gonna post the pinout for you guys if you're interested and if you have soldering skills uh, how you can actually convert this USB board into uh, a SATA board. Uh, you would also have to remove some capacitors uh, to disable the USB bridge but uh, this is what the final product would end up looking like. Okay as you can see I've attached a uh, serial ATA port to this and we're getting power just from our USB. Um, Western Digital is also uh, using a hardware encryption on their devices and, and this one in particular because this is uh, my Passport Ultra I don't think they're using any encryption on elements but uh, my Passport Ultra is definitely encrypted so if we convert this drive to SATA and uh, take care of the firmware situation, we will not be able to get the data directly off of it. So the decryption would have to be done. So the process consists of several steps. First, we convert to SATA to take care of the problem with the slow response issue, which is what's preventing us right now from seeing the drive and being able to access it. Once the drive is converted, we create an image off of it uh, using uh, something like data extractor, sector by sector copy onto another fully functional drive. Now, that drive needs to have same amount of LBA, meaning that it has to have exact same size as the original. Okay, so for that we can use one terabyte, uh, two and a half inch drive like this, or even a three and a half inch uh, drive, just as long as it's uh, same size. And if it's bigger, um, tools that we use are able to cut down that um, LBA mount to whatever it is on here to make it compatible. The reason for that is because when you perform a decryption, once you obtain a full image of this drive through SATA, will need to be decrypted. Now you can decrypt it with um, um, with the Western Digital product and that Western Digital product comes comes on Western Digital MyBook drives okay uh, this may not be a secret to somebody but it is a really valuable uh, piece of information because a lot of people would try to convert it and still not get access to it and the reason for that is probably the encryption factor okay so this board will perform on-flight decryption of your data if we're working with a clone copy of SATA uh, drive all right so Western Digital has several uh, different types of uh, these board attachments on the my box and there's several revisions of uh, firmware encryption that they're using so if you don't have access to all of them, sometimes you know it would be sort of like a trial and error kind of thing. Uh, but uh, majority of them uh, that we see coming in right now are using this slanted triangle-shaped board um, for this kind of generation of, of drives. What I've pulled here is a uh, two and a half inch 
SATA drive that has a part number in the middle 771960. That's what we're going to use uh, to perform a board swap. Okay, so the drive we're going to be working on is ending with the serial number 6023. You're gonna follow that and you're gonna see that we actually mean business with this thing and not just words. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the board from here. Okay, we're gonna perform firmware adaptation on them. We're gonna remove uh, the U12 chip from our uh, USB 3.0 board. Put it on this board and uh, we're gonna use the SATA board to activate our passport drive. Okay, so now that we got our um, hot plate nice and warm, I'm just gonna set these two guys right here. Let them preheat a little bit. Okay, we won't swap the SATA ROM onto a USB board just because we're going to have to most likely move it back afterwards. But this is it pretty much for uh, the prep process um, to convert this, the drive to SATA. Alright, so we got our board and we have our passport drive that we're working on. I'm going to put them two together. Alright, uh, I'm gonna use channel number two, I guess, on the PC3000. Okay, so the drive spins up. These two green lights up there, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm trying to focus on that. These two green lights up there indicate that the drive came into a ready status. And how to select the family of the drive. and it goes into timeout. So, I suspect that this drive has um, a pending issue. Okay, so looks like it's not budging. To um, get the drive into a safe mode, to actually get it to the utility so we can begin to work with it, we're gonna have to isolate the head assembly by spacing it out with something like a business card for example. This may take a little while because it's only working with the with the PCB. But the drive is spinning nonetheless. And we obtained our two signals, so we're gonna again select auto selection. And as you can see, it detects that it's a Western Digital Marble. And go in. Have light. 
is the family okay to this so right now the drive is in the safe mode and it's working with the board only okay so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put it to sleep okay this powers down the spindle of the drive I'm gonna remove the insulator and attach the board fully again and recalibrate and then I try to obtain a passport So we somehow need to get access to the Relo list module that is a part of the firmware. Now the way I'm gonna use to get this done is I'm gonna actually shift the region addresses in the firmware by one and I'm gonna write it into the firmware of the drive. Okay, so now the drive is not getting into proper positions where the regions begin it's uh, going to be pointed to a different spot which automatically will send it to kernel mode. Power down. And as you can see this time it lets us in the utility all by itself. It indicates that uh, the regions have been moved over which is fine so this here is what we're gonna need to match for um, our loader because we're gonna need to apply the loader for this so we can start searching the service area so we just need to match up um, the ROM version, so 16.0 TH is what we need. We just gotta go through uh, a couple of these here. this might work all right so as you can see we're able to load it up now we're just gonna close this so it says that the loader has been accepted now uh, the utility will allow us to search the service area original service area of this drive and find whatever modules that are in there so we're gonna select the ABA and we're actually gonna save this too and so this is we just gotta wait till this is done it may take a little while but um, I'm just gonna pause the video for now and once it gets close to the end I'll carry on now that the process is done uh, we're just gonna need to save the service area and the profile These are the modules that we were able to detect. Our utility will allow us to uh, use it in this set. Uh, so we're just gonna select that. Okay, 
just gonna test the modules. Make sure that the critical modules are fine. And we have the results. So just looking critical ones here. Everything looks good. The module that I'm interested in seeing at this point is the relo list, which is a module number 32. If we access this, usually if it's got any entries in it, we would want to clean them up, okay, because that's what most likely is going to slow our drive down. So in order to do that, we're just going to go into the option to resolve it, and we need to put a restriction to no longer be able to write any new entries into the rel list. Okay, so right now it tells us that we need to um, repower our drive. Now that we cleared out that listing, the drive should be able to come up on its own since our service area is still shifted. We're gonna shift it back. Power down, power up. And right now we should be able to get access to the drive's content and uh, work with the service area. As you can see, it now lets us in and it gives us a full ID with the passport ending with 6023. And um, that's exactly what we're dealing with here. 6023. Alright, so auto selected. The drive loads up fine, everything looks good. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and see if we're able to read it and we are uh, what we see here is an encrypted version okay um, there is nothing that I can recognize as far as the writings it usually should something it should be something along the lines no bootable partitions found because this is sector zero and uh, if we look further this there's also encrypted information, as you can see this is a pattern for most likely encrypting zeros, that's what the zeros would look like in an encrypted form. Instead of zeros we see a bunch of different digits. Go into universal utility and just let the drive read for a little bit. Let's see, starting somewhere in the middle of the drive. Okay, right now uh, it's performing an express test, so it just quickly glances through the data. Seems like no interference with uh, any heads, uh, because this is reading really, really fast. And uh, we've gone through about 5 million sectors so far. And uh, no heads had responded to any delays, like occasional yellow spot is completely fine. Usually that's where the heads switch. So that takes a little bit of time, so it re reports that there's a slowing down going on, but uh, technically uh, it works like it should. So in order for us to access the data uh, right now, I would perform a uh, full sector by sector copy of this drive, let's say to this hard drive, which is also one terabyte. And then I would attach that drive using this adapter here. So that adapter will perform the function for the decryption of the data and uh, once the data is decrypted we're able to read it. So I hope uh, this video made sense. Uh, as you can see this can be a lot of work and uh, it does require specific knowledge it does require specific tools to be used with this this is not maybe a do-it-yourself project for everybody but uh, if you need assistance with it uh, feel free 
to contact us um, all of our contact information is in the description of this video um, if you liked it please hit like uh, share this video uh, and uh, we will definitely be shooting more of this stuff uh, especially now uh, we're going to be concentrating on putting out a lot of content for you guys uh, that could be used uh, thank you very much for watching have a great weekend uh, we'll be back next week